If you're a creator looking for a powerful yet affordable machine as a workhorse for content creation and projects, then the Acer Predator Helios 300 might be a good option for you. Hey, what up? It's your boy Mob Justice back again with another video. Uh, thank you to everyone who's been watching um, all of the episodes. This is episode 30, uh, a little bit of a milestone. So thank you to everyone. Also, to thank you to everyone who uh, participated and engaged um, with us for our previous episode around uh, the Acer uh, Predator Helios 500 uh, that we reviewed a few weeks back. Um, now I'm back with the Helios 300. Um, thank you to the team at Acer for sending that through. I had it for about uh, three to four weeks or so, and I just got to use it on day-to-day -day content creation, um, that type of thing. As I said in the first Acer video, Acer has not paid for this review, and these are my own impressions uh, based on uh, use cases as a content creator. So I'm in the process of editing the video, as you can see, and I thought this would be a good time because I actually shot this at the start of the week and during the week, it must have been around Wednesday, Acer actually had their next at Acer event where they actually showed off a couple of new devices and made some um, announcements about improvements to the Predator lineup as well. But of note was uh, a new line of Chromebooks uh, that they came out with in partnership with Google. And then for creative professionals, because this video is directed towards that, um, there is a line of laptops called the D7 and the D7 Pro very slick machines. Uh, they kind of look like Predator machines, but uh, they are white. That's the color that they showed off on the day, uh, looking like uh, the beast of machines. Just something to consider um, going forward that there are some new machines uh, that are available if you are in the market. And as we go with this review, because we did start off with the Helios 500, uh, which is you know closer to the top end um, of uh, the Predator spectrum, um, we decided that maybe the 300 might be a good option to look at um, on the slightly lower end uh, because it still costs uh, quite a bit of money for most people uh, but compared to some of the competition um, it's a reasonably priced machine and it would be hard not to make comparisons between um, the two the two because uh, the philosophies are you know in the same direction uh, but there are quite a few departures along the way as I said in the Helios 500 review. I am not a gamer, so that's not the lens through which I'm looking at these machines. Content creator, Lion Media, LO TV, uh, Mob Justice TV, that is the lens um, that I'm looking at this through. I am a content creator, uh, primarily video, as you can see here, but we do um, a lot of projects for um, other creators and also a lot of clients. Um, so that's the type of machine I've been in the market for. And as I said in the previous video, I've been, I'm in the market uh, for a new machine, particularly on the Windows side, because I've been primarily on the Mac side for the last three to four years and I was now looking for a Windows alternative and gaming machines were on my radar. Starting things off, I would say that this machine is quite the beast. Not quite what the Helios 500 is because uh, the specs are completely different. I'll just, you know, line up the specs over here so that people can see uh, what we're talking about, but a powerful machine um, nonetheless. So this is different because we are dealing with an i7 as opposed to um, an i9 uh, that we saw in the Helios 500. And at the same time, there was less RAM um, in this machine compared to the one that we had before. So there was some interesting uh, you know memory considerations um, from that end but on you know most tasks the machine was keeping up some initial impressions about the machine is that on the build quality this one feels a little bit sturdier and better build uh, than the Helios 500 whilst the Helios 500 is mostly plastic uh, the Helios 300 is quite sturdy some hard plastics 
um, hard edges but it does feature metal on the inside um, when you do open it and it does have um, smaller bezels around the screen and when you look at the profile because it is a 17 inch machine which means it's quite hefty it's quite big uh, but it's got a much thinner profile um, than the Helios 500. The Helios 500 to this day is still just such um, a huge machine. Yes the 300 um, carries a a, a quite a big profile i did the same test where i put it against uh, i put the macbook uh, macbook pro uh, 2015 on top of it just as a size comparison so you can see it's quite a big machine uh, but uh, much thinner uh, than the helios 500. the other thing to note is the fact that um, we were dealing with a 1080p screen as opposed to a 4k screen and you could all and you could see the difference right the first First one is I remember talking about how saturated the Helios 500 was uh, but this one is more neutral tones and a little bit more balanced and in line with the other screens and you know other screens that I uh, use on a daily basis and the other one is because this one isn't uh, isn't 4k um, the the picture was quite sharp but you do see a difference you know most of the time they say that 4k you see it on big screens um, but i was able to see a discernible difference um, when i was watching content let's say on youtube and you're looking at 4k content uh, as opposed to you know 1080p or 1440p you can see you can see the difference uh, but otherwise it is quite a great screen um, on the whole in terms of observations uh, the first one is just that uh, the Helios 300 makes the same um, sound and noise that the 500 does when you switch it on it's got the uh, that futuristic sound uh, very you know quite catchy when you know, when it does uh, when it does its thing Um, the second um, observation, I remember I complained quite a bit about this um, in the previous video, but this machine, it does have quite loud fans, but they're not as loud and they don't kick in as randomly as uh, the 500 ones do. So they do spin, they are, you know, relatively loud, but they have a softer tone to them. Um, that's the first thing and the second thing is they're coming in uh, much less time but when they do kick in they do kick in hard and you do see it as i'll say you know later on particularly around some of the harder tasks um, like video editing they do kick in quite a bit and you see them kicking in um, a little bit sooner than what the way the 500 would go i guess owing to the difference in capacity and uh you know the powers and, and processes of the machines as is common with uh, Predator machines from Acer, they have something called Predator Sense, and that's sort of a hub where you can see um, what the fan speeds are, you know, how much memory you have, you know, that type of thing, the processor, how everything is doing, the system itself. But for some reason, whenever I would press the button, the whole time that I had the machine, I could not get Predator Sense to actually work or to launch. There is a dedicated button on the machine, uh, like other Helios, uh, like other Helios laptops and other Predator laptops. But this one, whenever I press the button, nothing would happen. Yes, there was an a, there was you know one there was another hub um, that was there, but it was not um, you know what we were, what I was used to, especially having come from the Helios 500. One of the interesting quirks that I remember noting from the 500 video that we did is that the time was one hour behind. And interestingly, I saw that this was the same issue. I'm not sure whether it's because these machines are all coming from Acer itself, or maybe, like I said, I'm doing something wrong, but the machine knows where, where we are. It's got the auto, auto time thing. So it's just one of those quirks that I still haven't really been able to figure out. Why is the time just not correct? Why does it think that um, Johannesburg is one hour behind um, than it actually is? 
the port situation on the helios 300 more or less the same as what we saw on the helios 500 and just like the bigger brother there is no sd card slot and for those of us that are you know we've got cameras that have sd card slots and even um, audio devices uh, that we're recording audio onto that have um that type of that type of memory and flash on them it's it's one of those features that i wish that I wish a machine of this caliber actually had. One thing I did like about uh, the build and the design is the keyboard layout and the feel of the keys themselves. I feel it's a much better typing experience than on the Helios 500 simply because uh, I like the key travel, um, the switches that they have there and also the dampening um, that they have because you know when you're typing you can really you can really feel it and you know for my preference and I would say I like it. What I did find weird is that in certain cases um the keys what the actual keys say on them versus the characters that do come up um like if you're trying to get an at sign for example for those that like twitter instagram etc you can't get that because normally it's uh you know it's a shift in one of the numbers but now you have to do uh this shift and uh, one of the one of the you know quotation mark keys uh, which i found you know weird i guess it was just one of those quirks at least it's one of those things that you can quickly figure out and maybe adjust your mind to going forward my question is why put the at sign on that key if that's not where the at sign is actually going to be and with the speakers once again guys it's a gaming laptop you know this is not the greatest uh, audio experience that you're gonna get if you can get yourself a headset or get yourself a pair of external speakers that would just work best for you but for those that are curious, the sound itself is much less bass heavy. I would say the than the Helios 500. I'd say the Helios 500 um, has a bit fuller sound. You can you know feel the the attempts that they were trying to do with virtual surround sound and all that. But with the 300, that is, you know, that that's not really there. And at the same time, you know, depending on how loud you are listening to something, when you listen to certain types of dialogue, there's actually some rattling um, in the system that you do here. That was the first thing. Second thing was, uh, you know, another quirk, but an observation is that um, when you plug in external speakers, there's a buzzing sound right that i was getting from you know some of my speakers and i've never had that before and basically the way it would act is would have this um continuous humming sound right and then only when something is actually playing does that humming sound disappear if you switch something off or if the system can detect that nothing is playing then the humming noise kicks in as if um the speakers have the the audio system is just completely shut down um which is something i've never experienced um on any other laptop or machine moving on to some of the creator considerations one of the tests that i started on the helios 500 um on this part there will be a lot of you know the back to back uh, because i think that's a good way for us to do it um the transfer speeds that we spoke about the last time you know just transferring um some files um i was able to get uh, the same you know normal read and write speeds that we were getting um at around 40 megabytes or so per second and uh, unlike the helios 500 i didn't experience you know uh, that uptick where you see where you go above um, 100 mega megabytes per second which i found odd because just like the helios 500 this machine does have um is an ssd as part of um the array of drives that is in there you know just one of those things to think about if you're going to be dumping or uh, you know uploading or downloading a lot of data between um different devices let's say a camera and audio device and there's a lot of footage or something uh, that you need to transfer from one device to another when it comes to video editing once again we took um the helios 300 into adobe premiere pro uh, because that is my video editing suite of choice i love that editing suite quite brilliant been using it uh, for i'm gonna call it going on to seven years now and we use the same test project that i did um for the previous review with the 500 and what i saw is that they achieved similar results except that when the system is running through adobe premiere 
yes the fans you can tell that the system is a bit more strained because you're dealing with a you know lesser processor and less ram uh, but the fans do run you know a bit uh, a bit uh, less loud than what you get um, on the helios 500 the other consideration you know inside there um what i did notice is the fact that the memory because uh there's less there was less ram in this system compared to the other one right the amount of ram that you had left it would reach system capacity etc uh, at around 60 80 percent much sooner than uh, where i would have reached it when i was testing out um the helios 500. perhaps the most surprising thing to me in the video editing category was um, the 4k video edit that we had going because the last time we were dealing with a lot of ram i think 64 gigs of ram and an i9 right so i was expecting you know very good 4k performance on that machine but with this one yes it's an i7 and um we had the rtx in rtx graphics card sitting inside that machine but i was quite surprised just how smooth everything ran because literally with uh, 12 to 15 streams of 4k footage all running at the same time there was no shudder there was no lag there were no dropped frames everything was just running as smoothly what i did find quite fascinating was the fact that the just as with the helios 500 the helios 300 stumbles in adobe premiere pro where you introduce an um, element of text you can run the 4k timeline with color correction um, inside there and it runs smoothly but with text it had the exact same jitters that we saw um, on the helios 500 and i was like ah, oh, that's i found that to be the most fascinating thing Unsurprisingly, on the export side, um, just exporting the same file that we did the last time, it seems this time around, it took about double the amount of time. And this was the one area in the video editing experience where you really got to see um, the difference between the specs in the Helios 500 versus the 300. But for the type of system and configuration that you have there in the 300 it really is you know you know quite a quite a powerful machine um that you are dealing with and um for my uses at least i think and for most people i think it would suffice um the type of performance that you're able to get out from that on the whole it's a very powerful machine and i think personally if i was to be made to choose um the type of which machine to go for i would likely go uh, just given you know budgets and some of these other considerations budgets build quality um fan noise etc i would lean more towards um the helios 300 you can really see that the 500 is just extra but for the price and the type of specs that you're getting in the 300 it's uh it's a fairly it's a fairly good offer that they have um that they have on hand the, the drawbacks you know is the fact that like any other gaming laptop the, ba the battery is just not great right maybe it's unfair for me to say like any other gaming laptop um because of how powerful the system is and the power draws but the battery the battery life is not great i think um i did one or two tests because we are in south africa we are in johannesburg so there are elements of load shedding for people that don't live in this part of the world load shedding is where um they switch off electricity in some parts of uh in some parts of a town or a country just so that they can balance out energy demand um in that area and when there were those spats you could see the battery you know i think it had about two hours 15 minutes um as opposed to the less than one hour that we saw on the helios 500 so double the battery power um from 100 percent that you get on the helios 300 which is you know which is a good advantage but at the same time it's not great because um on my macbook for example i get at least you know maybe about seven seven to eight hours um on a hundred percent of charge so those are some of the comparisons that i will be making um, on that end the acer predator helios 300 is by no means a cheap machine uh, but in the world of content creation and especially the world of photography and videography 
it is a relatively affordable machine especially when you consider it against some of the competition that's in the market especially on the side um, of the razor blades uh, that are there the dell xps and especially on the macbook side the type of specs and performance that you get uh, in a helios machine is quite affordable compared to some of um, the competition yes you do sacrifice a little bit in terms of battery life and uh, some of the build quality considerations and probably um, machines that run slightly uh, you know slightly cooler and you know more quiet on that front but if you are budget conscious and you're looking for good performance then this would be a good option for you which then leads me to one of my biggest gripes that I've had um, with Acer I've really enjoyed the machines but in terms of pricing and availability particularly in this part um, of the world um, it's been you know quite hard to do when you go to Acer's own website where they're selling the machines and you know you're trying to spec out um, a machine the pricing and availability is just not um, on par with other manufacturers that's just the truth and it was especially hard you know trying to answer questions after the last video about the helios 500 because pricing and availability on that is almost non-existent at least with the 300 um, i can link i can give some links below um, but in terms of uh, trying to spec out the exact type of machine um, that you know that we had you know at the moment it doesn't seem as as if um, that is either available locally or it's easy to find so you know this is that caveat if you're looking um, to be buying the machine on that front the other thing to consider because today we've been comparing the helios 300 to the helios 500 for the most part is some of the other options that are available in um, the predator lineup for example you can get um, the triton 500 or you can get the triton 300 and and uh, for the most part, these machines are similarly specced at each of the levels, with the exception that the Triton lineup is uh, thinner and lighter machines uh, than the than the Helios lineup. So you get that um, added advantage for people that are conscious of that of build quality and some of those de design factors. And then there there are some pricing differentials um, on that front. On the lower end, in uh, you know Acer's lineup, you can also get uh, the nitro lineup that's sort of more um, on the entry level side of things so these are all different things to consider and I will leave um, some links below uh, for people to consider both um, in in South African pricing and uh, you know international pricing like on Amazon for people that just want to get maybe like an overall sense of what things look like on that front and the last consideration is just what your use case is going to be for this machine. As I said previously, uh, you have the people that want a fully mobile setup, the people that want to be able to take their machine um, away from home or from the office and take it to another location, but still have it plugged in in a stationary position. And then the people that want a, a, a desktop replacement where it just does not move. Those are usually the three types of creators that you're dealing with and for me this feels like a machine that uh, is in category um, one and two where on the one hand you can have it as a desktop replacement and on the other hand you can't take it to location and have it plugged in but as a fully mobile setup this is just not it um, because of that battery life you know you, you're out you switch on a powerful me uh, editing suite like premiere pro and very soon Soon you're out of battery you know so those are all some of the considerations and then the last thing because of that fan noise if you're someone who records audio maybe you're recording podcasts or something or voiceovers this is not a machine that you want to be on or running next to your mics because they will catch you know that sound so that's been it um, and it's been quite interesting once again thank you so much to the team uh, from Acer for sending through uh, the Predator Helio uh, 300 it's uh, quite a powerful machine and as i said uh, very good value for what you're getting the specs um, compared to 
some of the competitors it's quite a good bargain that you're getting on that front and then just some of the considerations like i said uh, build quality battery life and what your use case is going to be let me know what you think in the comments. Is this something that you're considering? Would you take this over the 500? Would you, you know, maybe consider uh, the Triton lineup? Let me know some of your thoughts. At the same time, do you think uh, that gaming laptops are a good tool for uh, content creators, whether on the music or video and photo production side? Let us know what you think and hopefully in the future we can bring you more great content and more laptop reviews such as this. So that's been it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. This is Muffs Too Much and you're watching Mob Justice TV. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. We're there on YouTube. Thank you for watching our video. Subscribe.